Hey guys, it's Jordan here from JTech, and today we have the iPad 4th generation. Starting at anywhere from around $499 to $829, not including tax, this is a really solid performer. But, can it compete with other high-ranking tablets out there today like the Nexus 10 and the Note 10.1? Well, the only way to find out is by watching the full review. Alright guys, so obviously what we have here is the iPad 4. This one costs $599, it's the 32 gig version, that's the one I'm doing for the review today. The 16 gig is $499 and the 64 gig will run you $699 plus tax on Apple's website. But of course, shout out to Apple. If you decide that you're going to go ahead and buy it from them, you can get a free engraving on the back of your iPad saying anything you want. Now with that being said, I did not get this directly from Apple. I got this from a website called Swapple.com. It's where you buy and trade Android devices. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You bought an Apple device off a website that sells Android devices. Well, they have Apple devices on there, too, so they're not completely biased on there. So I was able to pick this up for $4.99. came with a two-year warranty, and it also came with a case that I don't really want to get into because it wasn't that nice, but at least it came with the case. So, guys, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and name off the specifications in here and then I'm going to go ahead and talk about the things I like about this tablet, the things I don't like about the tablet and reasons to buy this over the higher end Nexus tablets or the higher end Android tablets and reasons why you might not want to buy it over those. Um, I also have a little special segment I want to do with this Bluetooth speaker to show off how well the Bluetooth works on here but we'll go ahead and talk about that after I uh, name off the specifications. So first of all, the most obvious thing about this device is the 9.7 inch beautiful retina display, which is pretty much the, uh, the iPhone 4 was the first one to have a retina display and it's, you know, Apple, they're the ones who pretty much coined the term retina display. And this is probably the best retina display I've seen. I know you're probably thinking, you know, the iPad 3 and the iPad 4 have the exact same retina display and I may be wrong on this one. I'm pretty sure they do, but... I put my retina display next to my father's. He has the iPad 3, I have the iPad 4. I put both brightnesses up as high as they went, and I'm going to have to say that this iPad 4 looked a little better. Like, the whites were a little whiter, and uh, his looks a little more... I, I can't really describe it, but honestly, I believe that um, the screen has been enhan enhanced just slightly on the iPad 4. Now, uh, the resolution here is 248 by 1536, which is exactly double that of the iPad 2, which was 1024 by 768. More specs we have here is the Apple A6 processor, which is extremely fast. This processor was the one that was supposed to be in the iPad 3, but it didn't really work out that well. They didn't have it ready yet, so I think that's mainly the reason for putting out this iPad 4. Apple needed to uh, perfect the chip and then put it out. And they also wanted to focus on the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is making sure that all of their products had a lightning connector. The iPad 3 was the only Apple product out at the time of its release that, um, well, it was the only product left since the iPhone 5's release that had a 30-pin connector. So we had the new iPod Touch, we had the new iPhone, the new Nano, all these new Apple devices, and the iPad Mini, all of them had lightning connectors, but... The iPad 3 would have been the only legacy device left, so they basically had to put out a new iPad, and why not put an A6X processor in there? Uh, the last few things it has, so I can just wrap up this spec section, is a 720p HD front-facing FaceTime camera. That's what they want to call it now. And also a 5 megapixel autofocus rear-facing camera, which is an Apple EyeSight camera. Now, let's go ahead... And let's talk about the things I do like about this tablet. First of all, the most obvious thing that anyone's going to like is the super high quality retina display. Just in case you weren't really thinking about it when I said it, this screen is better than 1080p. 1080p is 1920 by 1080. This is 248 by 1536. That's a pretty much higher than that of the 1080p screens on phones and different tablets. Now with that being said, it does not have a higher resolution than the 4K displays that are out now or the Nexus 10 which is 2560 by 1600 or something like that. 
it's crazy. But one thing that I've noticed is once you get to a certain uh, amount of pixels in the screen, you really can't see the difference anymore. So, for example, um, if you look at the Droid DNA versus a Galaxy S3 or something, of course the Droid DNA screen looks better from personal experience. The whites are wider, the pictures just look more crisp and clear. But in terms of seeing pixels, once you hit about 720p, you're not going to see any pixels anymore unless you have superhuman vision. So, yeah, once you get to a certain amount of pixels, honestly, the Nexus 10 and the iPad 4 screen would look the same. It depends on what aspect ratio you would like, but I'll get on the aspect ratio later because that's part of the stuff I dislike about the tablet and we're trying to stay positive right now. Another thing I like about this tablet is the extreme amount of applications on here, all the HD apps. For example, I have the Walking Dead on here and I bought it on the Xbox so I already played it on the Xbox and I'm going to have to say the performance on the iPad is better than it was on the uh, Xbox by far. There's no choppiness on here, there's no um, stutter or anything. Everything is just perfect on here. Things load up extremely quickly. I don't think I'm going to have enough time to actually start playing the game on here if they don't hurry but basically it plays really well on here just like it would on any other device and that's really good for Apple so that's pretty much two in one I just did there they have a really good selection of games in the App Store and also they have a really good uh, really 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 good processor here that powers these games and allows them to load up extremely fast and let you start playing effortlessly this is Spy Mouse HD. I really recommend this game. So, on to the next thing I like here is the inclusion of a camera. They didn't have to put a camera on here, and you probably won't ever have to use it unless you're really in a fix, but it's just nice to have a camera on here, period. Just so you can um, go ahead and tap the focus there. Well, let's get the uh, S3 part because you can't really see the Samsung. I never really take pictures on here, but it's just nice to have it. Then you have the front-facing camera, too, which is really high quality. But I don't really think you'll be able to tell in the camera, so I'm just going to leave that alone altogether. Another thing I like about this tablet is it's going to have to be just, you know, iOS. It seems like they've kind of perfected it, and I don't think they're really going to do anything else with it. And that used to be my biggest gripe about iOS, just how bland it is, no live wallpapers or anything. But you kind of get used to it. I mean... It's really straightforward. All your apps are just here. No app drawers or anything. I really like that about this tablet. And, you know, I think that allows them to have speed on their side. Because I've noticed some Android things, you know, animations and stuff kind of slow it down. But basically, as soon as you hit an app on here, it's pretty much open. There's not really any waiting here, which is really, really nice. Now, I'll go ahead and start with the things I don't like. There's not many, so this will be quick. Then we can move on to uh, one more specification I left out on purpose because I want to really expand on it. But um, not feeling the aspect ratio at all. 9 by 3 aspect ratio. A uh, regular TV would be 16 by 9, which means when watching YouTube videos, you might get a black bar, which is not favorable at all. I don't really like black bars at all. And... Um, it's really unfortunate that this aspect ratio has made it that way. So if this video ever loads, I can show you the aspect ratio I'm talking about. As you can see, this is just his um, intro. But once we actually get the video started, you can see the black bars at the top here and the bottom. The ones on the side are because of his video, but um, the ones on the top and the bottom are actually from the iPad itself, not wanting to... Um, display the whole thing because it has a 9x3 opposed to the 16x9 on most other devices like the Nexus 10 or the Note 10.1. Uh, another thing I do not like about this is going to have to be, well I said I liked it at first, I'm not taking it back, I still love it, but it's going to have to be the apps in the App Store. I mean, <clears throat> they have some really good apps, but they don't give you an option to test the apps out or anything like you have to buy it. So if an app costs two dollars, I might never. My, uh, I'm sorry about that. I might not ever get to play the game because it costs two dollars. And what if I don't want to spend two dollars on something I've never played? I don't want to really take a chance on that and not like it. 
Um, so yeah, that's unfortunate that all these apps cost so much money. They have a lot of light versions and free versions with advertisements on um, the Android experience. Now, another thing I don't like, I just kind of added this in at the last minute. This isn't written in my notes or anything. I just realized it. <clears throat> but the iPad doesn't come with a built-in calculator. And they have plenty of calculator HD free apps you can get. But the problem is they have advertisements. And when you have a super nice retina display here with all these HD apps, Having an HD calculator app with a huge banner at the bottom saying uh, click here to buy the full app so this banner will go away is just kind of a problem and I really don't want to spend a dollar on something that should be built into my tablet, you know? So, you know, you can call me cheap or whatever, but I mean, not having a calculator app just doesn't make too much sense to me. I can flip through all these folders here. You can see that there is no native calculator app built in. They have a native calendar app. Even the iPhone has a native calculator app. But I guess Apple thought, hey, iPad users don't need a calculator. What do they need a calculator for? So that's something that's missing out here that's kind of disappointing to me. But it's not really that big of a deal. My last, last complaint about this thing is, um, of course, I know you're probably going to go crazy about me saying this. But it's going to have to be the lack of um, support for Google. I know you're probably thinking Google and Apple are in a war. Why would they support each other? But like... They really don't too much care for Google, so you know the Google Chrome app doesn't look too nice. The Gmail app doesn't look nice, you know. They work and all that stuff, but it's just like, they of course prefer their stuff over that stuff, but um, let's hope there's no private emails in here, but I really don't too much care for the uh, Apple's Gmail app here. Well, Apple's email app, my Gmail's hooked up to it in comparison to a Gmail app, but I don't want to go download the Gmail app. So, I mean... It'd be nice if there was a little further integration, like, for example, I know what I just said it sounded kind of crazy, but, for example, I cannot sync my Google Calendar on here, and I'm not really sure if you can. I mean, if you guys are able to sync your Google Calendar on there, you can tell me now, and I'll be really happy to hear about that, but it would be nice to have my Google Calendar on here without having to go download a third-party Google Calendar app. You know, little things like that. And I know I probably sound crazy for it, but it would really be nice if I could sync my uh, my calendar on here. And that pretty much uh, wraps up the things I don't like. All in all, guys, I'm going to have to tell you the um, good things far outweigh the bad things with this iPad. There's so many things you can do, so many different types of ways you can use this thing, that even I um, took a break from my laptop for the last two weeks, and I've just been taking this to school every day to take notes, and I've been using... Sketch or not sketch. I keep calling it sketch. I keep using paper and I was able to take notes for my physics class here and uh, write things down when I needed them. I'm able to, um, you know, study for my SAT vocab words here. We got a dictionary.com app. Khan Academy is really good. And I use Google Drive when I'm uh, trying to type up documents for class. Uh, this is one of our lab reports right here that we actually did. Didn't do the whole thing on the iPad, but it's just nice being able to pull that kind of stuff up on this uh, very small and portable device. And it just, the functions outweigh the price any day. Uh, at first, I was kind of skeptical because $500 for something, I mean, that's a lot of money when you don't necessarily have a full-time job or anything. But... It was definitely worth it. All the things I can do with this thing, the music player options, the option to use AirPlay on Apple TV, everything. This is just a really, really good value price for something. It works well. I've never had a problem with it at all. I've had it for almost a month now. And I'm just going to have to say, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give the Apple iPad 4th generation a 9.5 out of 10. The killer screen, the extreme speed, all that stuff. It, it could have gotten a 10 out of 10, but unfortunately this aspect ratio here, the pricey apps and also lack of integration with Gmail and that kind of stuff is slightly holding it back. And of course the calculator, but I don't think that took any points off. I just, that's kind of something that bothered me a little bit. And so guys, this is a really good tablet. I'd recommend it to anybody looking for a tablet out there. Of course, if you're looking for a perfect aspect ratio in an Android 4.2 interface, I have to recommend the Nexus 10. If you're looking for, if you're just a big Samsung junkie like me, and you love the Galaxy Note, you'll love the Galaxy Note 10.1.
if you're a big Apple fan and you like iPhone and iOS, then you can't go wrong with this iPad. But if you're just somebody who's stuck in the fence, I can tell you right now, the things that this stands apart from these Nexus 10s and stuff is, of course, yes, the Nexus 10 has a higher resolution screen, but it doesn't have too many apps to back it up right now. The Note 10.1 has that nice pen, but the screen is 720p, like on a phone. It's not really that high quality. It doesn't really look too good, if you ask me. And it's kind of plasticky and doesn't feel good. Uh, with this tablet here, it's really solid. This nice aluminum back here. It might not be aluminum, but it feels aluminum. The lightning connector flipping in and out, so you can flip either way and plug it in. And it's extremely fast at that. You can't go wrong with this. And um, I believe those are the reasons that you might want to buy this over the Nexus 10. I've already brought up the differences that are between the Nexus 10 and the Note 10.1 against this Apple iPad 4. So I don't really need to bring those up again. But like I said, I initially wanted the Nexus 10 and I went ahead and got this because it was on sale. And trust me, I do not regret that decision at all. I've never really got to hold a Nexus 10 or play with it, but I've seen plenty of reviews, seen Android 4.2, seen all that stuff. But I'm going to have to say I prefer the Apple iPad 4 to both of those. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Bluetooth 4.0 in the iPad 4. Not many devices out right now have Bluetooth 4.0, but the iPad 4 does. And, well, it's not really that useful right now because there's not many technologies that can keep up with Bluetooth 4.0 and all the things it's capable of doing. But the main thing that Bluetooth 4.0 can do that's really usable right now is battery consumption. Bluetooth 4.0's battery consumption is almost uh, more than half of that of the Bluetooth 3.0. It's really, really nice. The battery on the iPad 4 itself is really, really nice, which I did not bring up. Lasts me about three or four days. I took this off the charger Tuesday morning. It's Thursday night, and it's at 60%. I've been playing games, watching videos on here, everything. You could call it heavy usage if you want. But more on this Bluetooth and AirPlay, which is the last thing I wanted to talk about today. AirPlay is really nice. All you do is double tap and press whatever you want to listen to your music or video through, and I can start playing my music through the iPad like so. And if I'm in the music application, I'll just bring this a little closer so you can see because it's harder to see right here. If I'm in the music application, just tap this right here, hit Vejo 360, and it's playing out of my Bluetooth speaker. Anybody who's wondering, this is um, a Vejo Bluetooth speaker, obviously. The model number is VSS-009. 360BT. Just in case anybody wanted to buy it, I might make a review on it later if anyone's interested on actually seeing that. It's a really nice speaker. So, all in all, like I said, guys, 9.5 out of 10 on this. The small setbacks, like the screen and all that stuff, are very, very small in my opinion. Not even that big of a deal. In conclusion, it's a really good tablet. And if you want to find out more information about it, go ahead and hit my website. Uh, I provided in the description, shajtechnology.weebly.com. Thanks for watching.